Hey y'all, it's Jess. So on my Instagram, I asked you guys, how do you come out as autistic to your friends and family? And I got about four answers, which is really low. And one of the answers was, please tell me when you get answers because I need to know this. So I decided to make a video about this. I hate when YouTubers have really long introductions, so let's just jump right into it. Step one is to determine why you want to tell them that you're autistic. Uh, some good reasons would be that it would make your relationship better. Um, it would make you feel more connected to them as a friend. Um, that they are your family members and you think that if they know that you're autistic, then they can help you uh, feel more comfortable with things that have been, you know, getting in your way. Um, and be sure to remember that not telling someone that you're autistic and saying, mm, I probably shouldn't tell this person, that's not lying. All right, you need to protect yourself. So ask yourself, does this person have a history of accepting me for how I am? Or do they have a history of trying to change me? Um, another thing to remember is that sometimes we don't realize that people are taking advantage of us. And so look back and see if someone has taken what you've said or what you've done in the past and held it against you uh, any other time. So if someone is not going to take advantage of you for the things that they understand about you because you tell them you're autistic, if you're self-diagnosed, will they mock you for it or disbelieve you and invalidate that? Step two is context. Um, where you tell them, when you tell them, how you tell them. Uh, figure out what's most comfortable for you. Like writing a letter and explaining everything would make you feel like you can express yourself better than sitting down and talking with them. Do that. If you want to do it over the phone or over like a FaceTime video instead of in person because that would make you nervous, then do that. Uh, if talking on the phone makes you nervous and if you want to have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, then meeting in person is the best option. Make sure that you have the time that you need to tell them. If you're meeting in person especially, Make sure that you're in a quiet place with not a lot of distractions going on, so maybe not a coffee shop or something unless it's a very quiet coffee shop. Um, if you want to invite them over to your house so that you're in a good, like, comfortable, familiar environment, not with a bunch of other people around um, to distract you or suddenly you'll get interrupted and stuff like that. Um, another thing is make sure that you tell them, like, I, I want to have a conversation with you, I, I want to tell you something, um, just to, so that they're aware that you're not just sitting down and chilling and doing whatever. You know? So making sure that they are comfortable in sitting down and talking about something serious for a little while. Step three is telling them when you got diagnosed officially, if you are professionally diagnosed, or why you have self-diagnosed. So maybe bringing up that you took these tests online, uh, tell, tell them their name and tell them how they score it and what you score. Whether or not you're self-diagnosed or professionally diagnosed, write out the traits that you experience and that you have that correlate with autism. And that'll give them kind of more of an understanding, which leads into step four. You need some main points and main definitions. So I don't know how most people view autism if they don't know an autistic person. I've known an autistic person in my family my whole life. But um, I know that a lot of people just immediately have in their head this, this picture that is not true. Probably Rain Man or something from the media. Um, just like a little kid like rocking and screaming. I don't know. The, but everyone has a preconceived notion of what autism is. Whether or not that is correct. So having some main uh, points of where it impacts your life, good, bad, neutral, um, how, how it affects you, um, some definitions of what autism actually is in case they're thinking it's a mental illness or something. Just let them know it is a neurological difference, it affects my cognitive abilities, my sensory processing, my, my emotions, all that stuff so that you can educate them on that before they just immediately react out of that preconceived notion of what they think autism is. A key point to that is the more confident you speak and sound informed, they will realize, oh, those are a bunch of words that I'm not really sure of, 
so maybe I shouldn't immediately say, oh, you're not autistic. If someone is listening to a conversation about autism and hears like these terminology words that they don't know, that kind of highlights the fact that they might not be as educated about autism as they think. Step five is prepare to answer questions uh, or any other way of how someone's going to react. Whether or not they react in a good way is not a reflection of whether or not you are autistic. It is a reflection of their personality, not yours. So sometimes I have people who immediately want to ask all these questions. So I make sure that I'm prepared to answer those questions. Uh, some people just say, oh, okay, uh, that interesting, you know, oh, okay, I guess it's just a part of you, and it is. And sometimes you just need to be them okay with them not wanting to know all this stuff about it, and you don't need to do an entire autobiography to them. If someone says, oh, I don't really think you are autistic, anything like that, then you can always just end the conversation and just be like, well, agree to disagree. It's like, well, I'm looking more into it. If you're self-diagnosed, um, I'm looking more into it. I want to get professionally evaluated so we can see because I have all these difficulties in life that I want to get worked out. Um, it's, it's not about convincing someone that you're autistic. It's about letting them know how you feel. You know yourself better than anyone else. You know how autism presents in you if you've been like self-diagnosed or professional if they immediately invalidate you. It's okay that you didn't realize that they were going to react that way before you talked to them, um, but just embrace your community and especially if you are self-diagnosed, jump into the community for support and encouragement because it's always sad when someone seems to not understand us or accept us for how we are. And so when you have the community to fall back on, then that helps a lot with those feelings of being invalid, uh, being invalidated. Um, you can always message me if you have any questions, uh, any responses, any stories that you want to share. Anyways, I hope you all have a great week. I'll see you next Monday. Bye.